Sometimes it's hard to believe that my boys have children of their own. Wally's a successful attorney, and he lives just next door with his wife, Mary Ellen, and their daughter, Kelly, and another one on the way. After the Beavers' marriage broke up, he moved back home with his sons, Kip and Oliver. So we're all together again, helping a new generation face the trials and adventures of growing up. And that's what our series has always been about. Remember, Kip's in charge. Do whatever he says. Ah, oh, Dad. The last time he was in charge, he made us rob like chickens and pick up stuff with our teeth. I'll talk to him. <laughs> Molly, I know I'm right. Now cousin. I'm sure that he loves Cousin Phyllis. Come on. This guy just loves America. In a year, he's going to dump her like her other husband from uh, Nicaragua, Pakistan, Mozambique. Well, she works at customs. Who do you expect her to meet? <laughs> get those cute little shoes. All right, we get the point. Come on, let's go. Bye, kid. Bye. 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 Be good. Oh, no, I broke a nail. Oh, bye. bye. What's wrong, sir? Oh, I'm very weak. I just gave a pint of blood. Eddie, you gave them my blood. Hey, you think that was easy for me to watch? The nurse said when you give blood, you should drink a lot of fruit juice. Hey, that's a good idea, Kurt. Get something for yourself, too. <laughs> so, did you figure a way to pad old Widow Jensen's bill? I'm sorry, sir. I've been fairly busy. Mom asked me to fix her sewing machine. Hey, I'm getting sick and tired of these stupid excuses for you not to do your simple little chores. I finally had to hire a bunch of transients to repave the driveway. I'm sorry, sir, but Mommy... Hey, I'm sorry he's not good enough, buddy. You're already on thin ice. Now listen, I got a hot tip. A 90 to 1 shot. I want you to put a hundred bucks on Grandma Moses in the fifth. But you promised Mama my life you wouldn't bet anymore. Hey, you're still here, aren't you? <laughs> Kelly, right down the pike. Watch out. Here comes my super-duper knuckle curve fastball. <laughs> okay, but if you hit me again, I'm telling my dad. <laughs> Come on, Kelly, pitch it in. <sighs> Boy, Ollie, are you lucky. You almost busted up Aunt Mary Ellen's car window. It's not my fault. A bug flew up my nose. See? <laughs> Forget it. Just give me the bat. You're not batting anymore. Yes, I am. Oh, you're not. Eleven fifty. Eleven eighty. Only twelve bucks. We're dead. Hmm. A shattered window. A baseball bat. Broken piggy banks and three stupid kids. Let's see if we can piece this together. Knock it off, Freddy. We got enough problems. We'll just call Mobile Window. They're who I use. Oh, we did, and they said they'd be right over. As soon as we get 80 more bucks. My mom is gonna kill us. Yeah, my dad almost killed me when all I did was take the last peach. <laughs> We're never gonna come up with $80 before they get home. Cheer up, little Cleaver. 
I'll give you the eighty dollars. Where'd you get that? This is my old man. He told me to place a bet on a nag that couldn't win in a one-horse race. He'll never miss it. How can we ever thank you? I'll let you know if I ever need an organ transplant. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I am rich. Gert. Gert. I am rich. Woo! I'm rich. Hey, what's going on? My horse, Grandma Moses, paid off 90 to 1. <laughs> Grandma Moses won? Let's celebrate. Take dinners for everyone. And tonight, I'm going to pay for the salad bar instead of sneaking you through. Andy, you promised me you weren't going to gamble. It's not gambling when you win. Oh, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Sir? Are you familiar with the saying, to err is human, to forgive is divine? Nope. Okay, we're going to pick up my $9,000 on the way to the restaurant. Now, my bookie's in a bad neighborhood, so I'll leave the motor running while you go in. You know, sir, <laughs> only a man gifted with your sense of irony could appreciate the humor in what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> I feel obliged to inform you that earlier today, those impish cleaver children found themselves in a financial bind. And knowing Grandma Moses' spotty history as I do, I felt secure in giving them your money instead of placing the bet. <laughs> it's all right, honey. Oh, honey, it's okay. Oh, it's not. You owe me $9,000. Oh, baby, this is just a child. You have to forgive him. No, I don't. This is the last straw. This is the last time he's going to let me down. Sir, I can explain. No, let me explain. This is you, and this is me. And between us is a valley of misunderstanding. But tomorrow, this is going to be me. And this is going to be you. With your brother in military school! <laughs> the family. And didn't Aunt Martha look well? Mom, she thought she was at a baseball game. Well, no wonder she kept yelling beer here. <laughs> Wasn't it a shame that the groom flew his family all the way from Taiwan for nothing? Yeah. If immigration had only burst in a few seconds later, Cousin Phyllis would have been Mrs. Wing Duck Chang. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Aunt Mary Ellen, this candy is for you. Oh, how nice. I love candy. Good. Then maybe you won't be so angry when you find out we broke your car window. My new car? Don't worry, Mom. We had it fixed. Oh. Yeah, you see, Freddie Haskell gave us $80, and the guy from Mobile Window fixed it as good as new. Oh. I don't know if I want to ask. Where did Freddie get $80? Let's not ask. <laughs> Let's just be happy everything worked out. Not quite. You see, Freddie gave us his dad's money, so to punish him, his father sent him to military school. Just for that? Well, remember? He sent Freddie's brother to military school just for spilling grape juice on a white carpet. You gotta do something. It's just not fair. Yeah, even for a creep like Freddie. Okay, okay. You know how Eddie overreacts, but don't worry, I know how to handle him. He always listens to me. Sorry, Freddy, but I tried. Reverend Jesse Jackson couldn't have done a better job. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, Freddy. I'll mm -hmm. miss you, too. Take care. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. But don't give up hope. You know your father is. I'll talk to him. Take care of yourself, okay? And March nice. Where is Eddie, anyhow? Oh, he's in the truck listening to the radio. He wants to hear Clue 15 and the chainsaw giveaway. <laughs> I can't believe it. Just last week, you threw a fetal pig at him. Excuse me. These girls can't bear the sight of me going off to the service. Thanks for coming. Just give me my five bucks. I don't suppose there's any chance you'll write. Don't be silly. Although, for 15 bucks, I'll send you some of my hair. Now boarding. 
Interstate Bus Line 108 at gate 19. I guess it's time for me to go. Don't worry, honey. I packed your rubber sheet. Mom, it's been years. Hey, man, don't worry. I'll feed your snakes. Good. Feed them my father's butterfly collection. You got it. Thanks, man. Be cool. Final boarding call. See you, dude, sir. Bus 108, Fort Duwamp, Grove City, Muskegon. Breaking in a new kid. What fun! Oh, Reel him in, and let's get a look at this sucker de jour. Help! 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 How could Dad do this to me? He always said no one trims his toenails like I do. <laughs> Dad's a sick man, but he's blood. You gotta love him. <laughs> Refreshment? Mm -hmm. Take him back to his room. It's a long way. <laughs> Root beer float, steal your poison? My compliments, Bomber. You've got quite a set up here. This place is paradise. Nothing but dumb rich kids waiting to be taken advantage of. So, how's my turtle? Oh, you haven't heard? Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> Bomber, I gotta level with you. I don't want to be here. It's not fair. All I did was help out the Cleavers. The Cleavers. Freddy, in battle, never stopped to pick up the dead. But I want to be back in Mayfield. I want to go to my high school. I'm that close to finishing drilling that peephole into the girls' locker room. <laughs> Forget that rinky-dink town. One little airstrike and it's history. <laughs> Tell you what. Tomorrow, I'll stay you a jeep. Great. What's that on your shirt? Gotcha. <laughs> oh, bomber. Benderson's back from class. I gotta go see this kid. He just got his allowance. <laughs> oh, good. A new cadet. Okay, Toad Slime, iron those. First of all, Helmet Head, Epaulets are out. And second, the name isn't Toad Slime. It's Haskell, as in Bomber's bigger, better-looking brother. You got it? Platoon pants. So from now on, you're taking orders from me. Is that true, soldier? No, sir, never, sir! You, downstairs, two minutes. Full pack. No canteen. Okay, sir.
damn, so maybe I did overstate my influence here. So sue me! Do me a big favor. Of course. Will you talk to Mr. Haskell, please? No way. Come on. Dad, you see, I went over to feed Freddy snakes. Mr. Haskell's really miserable. Good. Freddy's even more miserable. Can't you do something? Kip, sorry, but we have to go to a wedding. Cousin Phyllis again. Besides, we tried. Remember? Then try harder. Well, I miss the little fellow. You boys never tell me what a lovely dress I'm wearing. Now, both of you, come on. You just get over there right now. I don't know why I have to go. He's your dumb friend. Honey, will you quit going through my magazines and erasing the model's eyes? Hey, Kurt. I've been thinking. Maybe we should have a kid. We have to, remember? You keep sending them away. <laughs> Why don't you just admit it? You miss Freddy. Uh, get off your soapbox, Gertrude. Sending that kid away was the smartest thing I ever did. Next to sending your mother that phony change of address card. Penny, you just... Hey, you just... whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. Fine. Gert, wait. Get my nail clippers. I can barely walk. <laughs> Golly gee, it's Wally and the Beaver. Hey, I never noticed this before, but for brothers, you guys look nothing alike. Let's go, Wally. Eddie, we have to talk to you about Freddy. Something wrong with him? Yeah, he wants to come home. Yeah, well, I want Gert to learn Swedish massage, but we don't always get what we want. Look, Eddie, um, <clears throat> we don't have much time, so I'm going to make this real fast. Why don't you just swallow your stupid pride, admit that you're unhappy, and let Freddy come home? I'll let him come home when rocks give milk. The kid needs to learn discipline. And if I failed, perhaps those fascists at Vicksburg can give him a shot of stern moral fiber. And if he can learn it without getting a toe shot off, all the better. Look, Eddie, will you listen to me? We, we only have our kids for a little while. And we've got to make it count. You know, sometimes I go up to Kelly's room and I just watch her sleep. <laughs> when I see her lying there, I'm always surprised to see how much she's grown. But one day, she's not going to be there anymore. And neither will Freddie. But he could be here now. Come on, Eddie, you love that boy. Don't waste the precious time you've got left. Hey, what is this, a Kodak commercial? <laughs> Had enough yet? <laughs> I think so. Hey, is this the way to the pool? Dad! Oh, how's it going, Sam? Fine, sir. And to what do I owe the pleasure of your company, sir? Um, well, your mom thought you'd like the new issue of Reptile World. 
So, uh, how's it going? I couldn't be happier, sir. Just this morning, I attended a fascinating lecture on how to attack a bunker with minimal loss of life. So you're, uh, having a good time, huh? Great. I guess I better get going. I suppose one of these weekends you'll be coming home for a visit, huh? Sure. Oh, no, I can't. Won't be getting a pass for another five months, and then only if I'm not taken prisoner during war games. Five months? I've been thinking. You know, your mom misses you a lot, and well, I owe her something after that little misunderstanding with my secretary, and... Maybe you should come home. Come home for good? Yeah. I mean, the house doesn't seem the same without you. And there's only your mother to yell at. And pretty soon you'll be going away to college, if you can afford it. <laughs> then we won't have any more time together. You mean you miss me? I sure do. I don't want to watch you sleep. Excuse me, sir? Uh, look, sometimes I get so hot-headed that I make the wrong decisions. And then I get so stubborn that... What do you say? You want to come home? Dad? Is that you? Bummer! Is that you? Sorry, sir. I didn't recognize you without your mustache. I shaved that off a couple of years ago. Mama, guess what? Dad's taking me home. I'll tell you what. You caught me in a generous mood. Today is amnesty day. Bomber, you can come home too. We'll be a real family again. Well, I'd love to, sir, but I'm so busy here with my charity work. And next week, we're putting on games at sea at the Veterans Hospital. And, and... You got a great scam going, huh? Well, sir, I had a great teacher. <laughs> Carry on, Cadet Haskell. Hey, I'll tell you what. How about if I take my two boys out for a steak dinner? Sounds great! Yeah. <laughs> I thought I seemed to have misplaced my wallet. Allow me. I want to break in this new American Express card. Since when are you, Tony Moscatelli? <laughs> yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> I finished mowing the lawn. And I finished spelling out your name on the lawn with rocks. Good work. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Finish working off the $80 we owed you. $80? You kids owe me $9,000. Now so get out there and start cleaning out those rat traps. USA Today calls the new Leave it to Beaver a welcome smile and fine family fair. Now you can catch Wally, the Beaver, Eddie Haskell, and all their families twice a week at 6.05 Eastern on Mondays and 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. That's the new Leave it to Beaver, exclusively on the Superstation WTBS. <laughs>